All right, so let's talk about the sign convention for energy transfer. And when I mean energy transfer, there are two ways to do it, right? For a closed system. So right over here, we have the heat transfer, we have the work. So the question that I am trying to pose, and you may be saying, thinking this is kind of, uh, you know, uh, very easy to understand. I want you to be careful because there is a kind of like a loophole, okay? Um, that I would like you to be aware of, okay? So this is my system. Right? So let's say that I have a Q in. Okay? And Q is heat transfer, right? Q out. So I want you to, you know, so far the sign convention that I'm gonna have will make sense to you. If, you know, you know think about this. So if a system is uh, some kind of an energy is leaving it, it's supposed to be negative, right? You know, because the energy of the system is going down. Right? If I gave the coffee example in the previous segment, it was at 80 Celsius, it's going to go to 60 Celsius. Why? Because energy is leaving the system. And vice versa, now I can have, uh, for instance, from the heat transfer perspective, I can have something like, you know, the surrounding is at 50 Celsius and the uh, uh, cold uh, drink is at 20 Celsius, whatever. Okay, you can see where it's going. So this will increase the energy of my system. So far, so good. So if this was the only convention that I have, I don't have, really have to talk about it. It makes a lot of sense. Okay, but heat transfer is not the only way. As you can see here, the system is uh, closed over here. The other way to do is, is, is putting work out of the system and I'm putting work into the system, okay? And we have specific ways for us to work this. The work out is called work done by very, very important, by the system. And if I'm putting in a work, I call the work done on the system. Okay? In regular English uh, language, we kind of confuse sometimes on, in, by. Do not do that confusion over here. Very important. It will change the entire meaning of what you're saying. Work done by the system is work out of the system. Work done on the system, I'm doing on the system, I'm putting work in. Okay, now let me explain what the confusion will be, okay? And I'm sure it will be like, whoa, yeah, you're right, that is confusing. Fine, I'll explain why. Give me one minute. So the work out is gonna be called positive. Oof, don't do it, you're, you're thinking, don't do it, don't do it, you're now confusing me. And work into the system is negative. Wow. Yeah, this is confusing. Let me explain for a minute what's going on over here. So looking at the system perspective, you are right that this is confusing. If there's a work out from the system, I put a positive. That doesn't make sense. If, you know, let's assume it's a diabetic. So this is not there, this is not there. So let's only assume that there's a work out. If there's a work out, the energy of the system, what will happen to it? I'm just extracting energy from the system. I'm doing work done by the system, right? So then what will happen is the energy of the system will go down, but I put a positive sign here. So what's up with that? Okay, um, well, number one, we will cover this when I cover the first law, but there will be a negative sign in front of W, okay? So, um, let me write it. Delta E will be Q minus W. Do you see? Again, assume that this is something that I didn't put to you. I didn't explain where it's coming from, okay? But think about that. I have a negative, you know? So, you, what will happen is, is I have a negative, positive, so it will be okay at the end of the day. The energy of the system will reduce in this kind of, kind of case. So then the next question may be, well, this is kind of silly. Why, sim why don't you simply be consistent and call it W plus and then call this a negative and call this a positive? Yeah, from this point of view, you're absolutely right. It is silly. You're absolutely right. But here is where it, where it's not silly, okay? Um, I'll go back to the system. Uh, uh, that I, uh, the example that I give it, I'm going a little bit back, there we go. So let's look at this system. If you remember the module, I mean, you should watch this before this uh, segment, but I have a turbine and what is happening is, you see what I put over here? Actually, I simplify this. There's a turbine, this converts to the shaft, rotation of the shaft, and the rotation of the shaft is connected to a generator and generator converts to the electrical energy and supplies to the city nearby, right? The point is, I'm taking energy out, okay? And this is actually a good thing. This is not a bad thing, right? Because I'm generating energy that I can use for other purposes. So from the thermodynamics perspective, we don't want to call this a negative number. 
And we don't really like that because negative is associated with, well, negative, right? I mean, you know, it's not a good thing. It's, it sounds like a bad thing, but it's a positive thing. That's why we go down over here. We say that, okay, if I can extract some kind of a work from the system, that's a good thing. That's a positive thing, okay? And if I need to put in the work, for instance, a pump, okay? The goal of the pump is to accelerate the velocity or, uh, you know, increase the pressure. We'll talk about this. But the pump basically is increases the velocity of the output, right? But I have to put work in. And that's not a good thing. It's a negative. So I have to, you know, think of the negative this way. If I want to operate a pump in my home, you know, you know, I'm losing my money every time, you know, like if I have $10 in my pocket, the pump is operating, it's, it went down to $9.90, .90, okay? So I lost 10 cents because of this whole operation of the pump, okay? I hope I've, I'm able to make this, uh, you know, very clear. I know that many of the resources does not let, really talk about this um, in detail, but I want to highlight that right away, address this elephant in the room, okay? But at the end of the day, as I mentioned over here, when I have a work out from the system, the system energy will go down. That is true. We are still on the same page, okay? Okay, so I want to also address another thing that is not, um, you know, uh, that is an important thing from the mathematics perspective. In the uh, previous uh, Excel module 1, what I said was, um, I said the states are point functions. Functions, right? Um, okay. The states are defined by the properties, time which is a property, pressure is a property, specific volume is a property, density is a property, uh, internal energy, specific internal energy is a property. Yeah, these are properties. And these are more like some things that we are more used to in mathematics. So if I'm interested in, for instance, the derivative of it, you can do dt, dp, etc. You get the point. Okay. Um, and if I take the integral of them, like you know, the pressure difference from if I go from you know p1 to p2. Well, I'm going to get, you know, integral of this is P and, you know, like this, right? P1, P2. So then this will be P2 minus P1. Nice. This, I'm not introducing anything new. You knew this already. If you don't, we have a major problem, okay? But now, these are called exact differentials, by the way, okay? We, we kind of don't state it as an exact differential because this is like norm. This is the normal one, right? So here's where it gets a little bit um, tricky. The heat uh, and work, heat transfer and work, are path functions. It depends on my path, okay? I don't want to talk a lot about it, but, you know, if I have a, for instance, P, V diagram, underneath of this is going to give me the boundary work, okay? Again, I didn't discuss these things, so I'm not going to, you know, so it really depends how I go from this uh, state 1 to state 2. If I go like this versus go like this versus go like that, what will happen is I'm going to get different amount of work from the system, okay? So then this is really a path dependent, okay? So these are path functions, okay? And the fi path functions are weird in mathematics and they are differentiated, they are uh, highlighted by inexact differentials, okay? So this is a little different. I want to, you know, just get from the get-go. So I'm not going to use, you know, d, w, d, q because those are exact differentials so i don't have something like that called we del w del q is what i will have for this okay um you know unlike this one where i have properties which are point functions these are path functions and another thing that i will have is this uh, one to two is not not uh, gonna be you know i did p2 minus p1 right? this is not going to be w1 minus w2 you know because it depends on the path. Because if you subtract this, well, I'll think about it. If you subtract this value from that value, value that's a constant regardless of how I go from here to here, right? If I go like this, like, you know, like it's going to be zero. But then if I go from here to here, it's going to be huge. But if I sub sub subtract these two values, I'm going to get the same value, okay? So that's why we call this, we abbreviate this by W1 to 2. In this particular manner, it simply says that it will be a function of the path that I take, okay? This is going to do it for this particular segment. I want to talk about mechanical forms of work, but it will be too long and I want to focus on it because we use this a lot. Okay. Thank you for watching the segment. I'll be back in, you know, soon. Thanks.